My research project has uh, focused on studying business models, especially those which are based on a licensing and a royalty-based uh, model across various markets and businesses. The idea has been to understand the motivation behind how a IP vendor would set the price, specifically the royalty rates. The key finding of the project has been that the viewpoint of the IP, uh, IP company who's licensing this technology has got to be for a long-term partnership with the customer. In a sense, the customer is actually a partner for long-term mutual success. If the IP vendor takes that view of the business and prices the technology with a long-term mutual success in mind, it works out better for everyone. The journey to the topic itself has been quite interesting. I've spent over 10 years in the semiconductor IP industry, and I have performed various roles like engineering and marketing and pricing. Pricing specifically is a topic very close to my heart because it has inherent challenges. The challenges in pricing intangibles are, are very interesting. And also, if you look at the semiconductor IP market today and the developments in the market today, the question of how to set prices is actually a very topical subject. So I, I wanted to bring it together. And I got the opportunity to work with the faculty at the, uh, at the Judge Business School and do a project with, with, with world-class academic guidance and to see if I could apply it back to the workplace. The questions that I asked um, as part of the research project I did, I spent a lot of time with the faculty in the Judge Business School trying to understand what would constitute an academically rigorous project. And I also worked with my colleagues to understand what kind of answers they were looking for with the, with the current challenges they're facing. So I've spent time with both the faculty and my colleagues and some other contacts through my EMBA network to see what kind of questions would require answers. And then we worked it through and created a project framework and then came up with a list of questions we wanted to ask. The project, the research itself, the research on the, on the project itself was done through both primary and secondary research. The primary research was primarily done through uh, interviews. So we went through a list of potential candidates for the uh, interviews. We tried to pick as diverse a set of candidates as possible. So this would be both academic researchers, um, people in business who have been in various roles and geographies and locations looking at businesses through various perspectives. So we came up with a list of candidates. This again covered people who are in the IP licensing, kind of the selling side, some people on the purchasing side and other third parties who were involved in the general IP ecosystem as well. And then the secondary research, of course, focused on contemporary uh, academic thought. We spoke to some researchers who are working on patent licensing, for example, trying to understand where the contemporary academic thought is going, um, scholarly articles, things like that, and also um, through other commercial business-based publications. So the basic licensing and a, and a royalty-based business model is based on the fact that someone invents something but does not necessarily want to take it to full commercialization to an end product that would be sold into the market. So for example, if someone comes up with an idea and wants to you know, create a business out of it but doesn't want to, for example, manufacture something, then that idea could be licensed to someone who wants to do that. And then the licensee would create a product and sell it in the market. And the person who created the idea or the, or the work in the first place would get paid an upfront license fee so the licensee can access the technology. And then subsequently, the licensee would also pay the person who created the technology some kind of royalty which could be based on a per transaction or a per product basis. So for example, in the semiconductor IP industry, if someone created an IP block, which they licensed to a semiconductor chip maker, then the semiconductor chip maker would create the chip and on a per chip basis, they would pay a royalty to the person who created the IP in the first place. The ARM business model is to create intellectual property, which can be used to develop digital technology, specifically semiconductor um, chips that go into various things like mobiles, tablets, 
and various other digital electronic devices we see around us. So ARM would develop the intellectual property, license it to companies who are generating further designs around this intellectual property, developing chips that are then going into various electronic devices. Now ARM would get an upfront license fee and also get a per product based royalty which in fact was the topic that I wanted to study, how these royalties need to be priced. The pricing of IP itself is quite a, quite a complex um, thing to do. There are various approaches to pricing IP. Um, the more traditional ways of doing it are cost-based, where someone would look at what it cost the developer to build the IP in the first place and then use that as a basis to price the IP. There could be a market-based approach where you look at what similar things are selling for in the market and use that as a guideline to price the IP. Or you could look at something called the income approach, which is more of a value-based pricing model where you look at what it's really worth to the licensee. How much income is the licensee going to generate from the intellectual property and then use that as the model. The, the challenge today is it's never as clear-cut as using just one model. It's always a mix of these three uh, concepts. And the challenge in pricing them is how do you find the right balance? And how do you find ways of pricing what is essentially the same product differently for different customers? I think the future for the, for the semiconductor IP industry is, uh, is absolutely fantastic. Uh, the way the market's going um, and the way there are new technologies coming into the market, things like, I mean, more recently we're using things like tablets, which are gaining various um, user scenarios across the world, but then we are also looking at emerging technologies like wearable technologies and especially in healthcare and things like that. Now, the challenges for an IP vendor, I think, are quite similar. The principal challenges are the same. I think the main challenge becomes how do you create these bespoke, customized pricing business models for these customers who want to do such diverse, um, who want to address such diverse uh, markets. So the idea is to understand what the customer really wants to do, look at the value-based model. The same product actually is valuable to every customer in a different manner. So you've got to understand how the customer wants to commercialize the IP and then price it appropriately. As I said earlier, it's a long-term play. It's a long-term partnership. I think the major challenge as new markets and new technologies evolve, the major challenge for the IP vendor is going to be to understand the customer and create models that work for the long term. For me, this project has been a great journey um, because it gave me the opportunity to actually think about things with a fresh perspective and challenge some of the assumptions I may have in my head that are deeply ingrained in my thinking. On a, on a professional basis, it has helped me to address these questions which have been quite difficult for me to, um, to, to ask some of the questions, to ask them in a professional environment because pricing by itself is quite a sensitive issue. And on a personal basis, I think it has really helped me expand my network through the EMBA class and through the extended network of the Judge Business School. And it has now given me a network where um, I can actually work with these people in the future as well. For ARM, it's been an opportunity to learn from contemporary academic and business thought and to kind of revisit the pricing strategy. Uh, to paraphrase Michael Porter, uh, the essence of strategy is to decide what not to do. So this project is not necessarily a catalyst for change, but an opportunity for ARM to reflect on what is already a very successful business model and plan for the future. I'm indeed fortunate to have had the chance to work with world-class faculty and apply the learning back into a workplace which is one of the most innovative on the planet. I just want to say thank you.